Idea generation can come in many forms. It really depends on what the problem is, the size of the budget, <laughs> obviously that we're working to as well. But ultimately, we all still start with a creative brief. Um, that brief is almost like a document for the creative team to go, this is what you're working towards. To get that simple idea all the way up to, let's say, a, a prototype, the most efficient and quickest way is actually just you know pen and paper. It's very low tech. Um, it's it's something that's very ancient in its sort of origins, but it's it's something that's still the easiest and quickest way to get an idea uh, and get it something into into material form. Another good thing that we always try to teach uh, the students is to write things down. We um, have lots of thoughts in our heads and ideas pop into the middle of the night, in the shower, when you want to loo. You never know when you might have a spark of an idea, you know, when you're down at the pub with mates or whatever. It could be anywhere. Keep a little notebook next to you, write them down, you generate this book of ideas that you can sometimes attach to a client. You've got a lot of ideas going through your head all the time and you do lose them if you don't get them down. It's just kind of a way to just capture those, those thoughts and memories. From there, it can take different types. You can workshop um, with lots of different disciplines. Again, to cover the wall um, in post-it notes, uh, synthesize that down, pick your top three, go into ideation on those, for example. Um, you can then go into design. Um, and going to prototyping. Something that we do a lot at Atlassian is spikes. They could be mini spikes or they could be like three month long spikes. We pluck people out of their day to day environments or their teams. They are usually specific people with a specific skill set or a specific point of view on the problem. We all just kind of think about it, come up with a bunch of solutions and then from there design them, build them out, prototype them and then bring them into testing. We tend to work in multidisciplinary teams, designers teaming with developers, teaming with project managers. So we bring this broad range of um, experience to the table. And with that package, we co-develop with clients solutions and ideas to their problems. So that's one way. Another way is just simply smaller projects, just two people. You can get two people um, sitting in the corner of a coffee shop, just coming up with ideas. It's, it can be anywhere. So the way that we will translate something like a sketch into a concept is we'll really take advantage of how we work at Atlassian with our triads and we'll be able to take the designer as the owner of the experience, the product manager as the owner of the strategy and the development team lead as the owner of engineering to understand how can this idea work from a design perspective from a strategy, business perspective, and from an engineering perspective. The first thing with taking an idea into concept is identifying the key message that you're trying to communicate in that idea. Once we have all our ideas gathered, you know, post-it notes scattered across the wall, we begin grouping, refining, combining, and um, reframing these ideas into groups. And then from there we form idea territories. So these are kind of like overarching concepts um, that have multiple ideas in them. For example, if we're developing a campaign or website for say a vitamin product, an idea territory may be an uh, upgraded lifestyle that we present to the audience and then how that's the resultant of you know the vitamin. And so once we have these kind of idea territories, we then ask ourselves, okay, what does an upgraded lifestyle look like. And then from there, we kind of have to sift through our visual vocabulary to kind of visualize this idea into a concept. How we know an idea is innovative at Atlassian is all down to the feedback that we get from the people around us. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's about throwing a whole bunch of stuff out there. This is where sparring comes in really handy for us as designers, where we'll come up with five different ideas that might translate into five very different concepts. And the way that we work as a design team, where we get to sit down and tear these ideas apart, really poke them, stress test them, see what's right, see what's wrong, that's what helps guide us towards understanding what is the right concept to work for. Innovation is a very interesting thing. Oftentimes, if you have a very innovative idea, it's going to be a disrupting idea. 
And so you really want to balance it out. You need to have the ideas that are safe first as groundwork and foundation so you can support that innovation. You want to make sure that the customers using their product aren't completely thrown in the middle of nowhere, like not understanding how to actually use it. But where you, where you want to innovate is those little pain points that people see every single day. The things that really just make that road really smooth. That's where you want to put your innovations. Generally, for um, when we present concepts, I like to present a few. These are essentially different angles in which we've translated the idea into concepts. A direct translation, very like on brief answers to what the client wants, one that kind of pushes that a bit further, and then another concept that is completely lateral and more exploratory, innovative. And with them we work through the pros and the cons, and sometimes we create a hybrid concept where we get the best from a few and narrow the direction down to, to one final concept that's, um, that's the, the lead for development. So at the next stage we'll take a concept and build it out into a UI or a prototype that we can then take to our users and start testing it with them. We look at you know, what we want to test with users and potentially other stakeholders. We begin to figure out what's the purpose of a prototype, that being the next stage of the concept. Um, if it's to present, we'll create a prototype that's more of a navigational walkthrough. If it's something that's highlighting a detail, we'll create, for example, a video for an animation to, to communicate that. So the prototypes that we're building here are either simple click-throughs, so things that just demonstrate the flow of a design itself, or we'll do like a more nuanced prototype, something that's based in HTML and JavaScript that has rich interactions in it that show off those small micro-interactions, the things that will actually delight users. And then we can see the emotional response to it as well. So this is the part where we'll really find out whether or not we are solving the right problem, where we'll be able to take a UI to a customer and say, what do you think? What do you reckon? And they'll be able to tell us if it's on the money for solving their problem or if we've strayed a bit too far from what they expected of the solution. And that'll help us refine the concept and refine the UI into the right solution. The prototyping process is very varied. One of the key skills at DNI is our ability to to, to work through mock-ups, proof of concepts, refined prototypes, advanced prototypes and we do tailor it to each project depending on scale and requirements. We have get so many varied um, clients from startups to sort of big multinationals so the, the process has got to sort of mould sort of their process as well and the, and the way they sort of structure their company. For example, um, you know, Everdua, uh, part of Shiro, uh, came up to us to design new barbecues. We have a discovery phase where we go out into the marketplace and we then try to have a bit of an understanding of what's already out there. How do people use the barbecues? How do they want to use the barbecues? What are some of the sort of the sort of the pain points or what are you know some of the experiences that need to be elevated in sort of designing that barbecue? That process is is key to setting up then the next process, which is our ideation, our sort of design phase, which is sort of doing lots of sketches, creating sort of 3D models to sort of visualize our, our designs, um, rendering it up to, for presentation, which both helps us and the client to sort of have a real life view look of what the product would be in reality. And we do that over and over again. It's not a sort of a linear process. It, it kind of loops back around. So we get to a point where sometimes we design free concepts it's not quite the right direction we've taken, but we've learned from that. And then we swing back around, do a little bit of a discovery and a retake of, of where we're going in the next round of the concepts, and we do that again. It's interesting that one of the biggest challenges we've had was one of the smallest kind of nuanced little interactions here, and that is simply just collapsing a sidebar. Making it so it's minimal and out of the way was something that we went through probably 40 variations of. Finding something that really delighted a customer, that was still easy to use, and it's really just a simple thing, like, oh yeah, just collapse it or whatever. But finding just the motion of it, finding how it moves, how it interacts, and how customers perceive it, really changes just the experience as a whole. It's at the prototyping level that you're really, truly testing ideas. 
that that's where you're going to get your best answers and that's where you're going to inform the best outcomes. The more prototypes you build and the more you iterate with prototyping, the better outcomes you get because you can put them in front of users, you can put them in front of technical developers um, and build on ideas. Really, it's adapting to the thing at hand that's going to be important when you're doing prototyping and research. Never are you going to actually have a solution that works for every single thing that's out there. You need to be able to adapt, and that's the core thing of research and prototyping, is adapting to the feedback and the situations that you have.